Fatal Femmes Fighting One, The Asian Invasion. Masako Yoshida versus Lisa Ward in the Flyweight Championship. Welcome to Los Angeles, California, where the world of mixed martial arts will be getting a facelift tonight. Hi everyone, I'm Jay Adams inside the Japan America Theater, where for the first time in history, the state of California has sanctioned an all women's cage fight. Invincible Inc. and Jim LLC present Fatal Femmes Fighting. Alongside me as always, AJ Benza. And AJ, these are professional athletes who really know how to bring it. No doubt about it, these girls are aggressive. You're gonna see a lot of aggressive fighting from the first bell. They don't like to stalk their opponents like some of the men do in the UFC. Women don't wait. Some of you married guys already know this, so expect some fighting instantly. Get your beer, your sandwiches now, because if you miss something, it could be big. And what can we expect technically from these athletes? Believe it or not, women can be technically more accurate, which means over time that can cause more damage and a couple of big blows to the head. So keep your eyes peeled for a lot of good techniques that women bring to the, to the mat today. The biggest disparity you'll see tonight is some of the, uh, the female professionals and some of the girls making their pro debuts. There's quite a bit of a difference in talent between those two, but that's kind of not what you're gonna see at the UFC event, but still here tonight, you're gonna see plenty of action from head to toe. Also with us tonight, two-time Muay Thai world champion and mixed martial arts cage fighter, Gina Carano. Oh, yeah. She's gonna be in the cage interviewing all the winners. She looks ready to me, AJ's ready. Ready to go. All righty, time to get started with our first fight on the night. I've been looking forward to this one, AJ. Jessica Penny versus Brandi Nerny in the super flyweight category. Jessica Penny, 1-0 on her career. The five foot fiver is 115 pounds. She's 24 years old, out of Orange, California. Trains with Apex, and on her feet, she's a Muay Thai specialist on the ground. She practices jujitsu. She'll be squaring off against a much stronger looking, at least, oh, yeah. Brandy Nerney. This is Brandy's pro debut. She's 118 pounds, 36 years old, 12 years older, AJ. That's gotta make a difference. I don't care how you look at it. 12 years is a lot of years, and if, uh, like you said earlier to me, if you, if you have any kind of professional life, you're gonna be, you can't train as often as you'd like, and I think if there's any advantage, is gonna have that advantage if you train more often. We're gonna see how that age difference plays out as the round goes on. Three two-minute rounds per the California Athletic Commission. Brandy Nerney using her upper body strength to press Penny against the cage. That's going to be her game plan. Nice left, yeah. I'd say Nerney's got heavy hands and especially a good right cross, so keep your eyes peeled for that. It happens really quick. Definitely looks like she has a strong upper body and great legs as well. I'd kill to have Ooh. quads like that. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I'd take her chest. I don't mean it that way, but... <laughs> Penny in the solid right? black is getting hit by Nerney in the pink and black. Penny probably, I would say, given her body style, wants to get Nerney off her feet as quickly as possible, start applying some of that jujitsu. Well, she's got to do it quick, because for two minutes, you really can't do it as much as you want. And here she is right away on the back. But falling into the half guard is Nerney, and Nerney going to try to put some offense together from the top, although Penny doing a great job of oh, shrimping she's around. It. She's got it. She's, she looks like she might get her back, AJ. Back. She rolls back, she's got it. She's got her back. Yeah. And it looks like she's sunk something in pretty deep here, AJ. This could be trouble for yeah. Nerney. Here we go. Nerney's in serious trouble. Yep. And she's tapped out. Well, that was tapped quick. out early in the first round. Wow. Penny making short work of the much stronger looking Nerney. Again, you never know with strength. <laughs> Look at how thin Penny looks, but it's those long arms, yeah. the ability to slap on a submission, and that's that left jab that caught Penny coming in. And Penny said, okay, I'm, oh. I don't want to feel that again. I'm taking you off your feet. She was locked in right there. And she put her out early in the first round. Let's make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Irby has stopped this contest at 1 minute 20 seconds of the first round for your winner by a rear naked choke, Jessica Miller! Penny with the long arms, the long legs, she's been trained well. Taught how not to panic, you've got a stronger opponent punching you in the face, the, the, the thing to do is to stay calm, breathe deeply, breathe through the nose, and work your submission. Well, she kept her away with a couple of leg kicks, and I tell you, I don't think age did play much of a factor after all, because this came down to technique, and Panay had it over, over Nerny. Good point. It wasn't any kind of conditioning that won the fight for Penny. It was strictly technique. And with these two-minute rounds, conditioning is not going to play a part like it does in, in the men's league. 
And speaking of conditioning, it's time to meet the super middleweights. Now, these are substantially bigger women than the first fight we just witnessed. Despite the fact that they are shorter rounds, could conditioning come into play? We'll see. Let's take a look at the stats. 33-year-old Rebecca Long is only 5 feet tall at 160 pounds. Garcia with a substantial height advantage. 5'7 against 5 foot. That's got to matter, especially when you want to keep your opponent away from you. She also has an age advantage as well. Eight years younger than Rebecca Ryan Long. But uh, Rebecca's got a low center of gravity. She may be hard to take down, so it could be interesting. Interesting indeed. You never know which strengths play into a particular fight. Which strength will a fighter take advantage of? You got a low base with the shorter Rebecca Long. That could help her in her takedown defense. Oh, boy. Conversely, you got <laughs> sick kicks like that from right. Garcia. <laughs> wow. Man, that's that snap. Garcia doing her best to try to throw Long off her feet, but Long again with that wide center of gravity like you talked about there, AJ. Well, she, wants, yeah, she wants to get it down. She's, she's versed in Muay Thai and, and Jiu-Jitsu, so it's to her advantage. And here he is right away with the somewhat of a choke call, but it looks like Rebecca's getting out of it, and she does. Garcia in the black and blue is fully oh. mounted. The lighter blue trunked Long. Long is in major trouble here because she's got no movement from the hip. Anything down, she's trying to shrimp out the back, but she's sh giving back. It's oh. a big mistake. Yeah, she's in trouble. Garcia keeping the hands active, very well coached. Try to get the ref to come over and stop the fight if you can. Just keep those hands going. But she's uh, definitely in the superior position here. Yeah, Rebecca's got to get an elbow at the four. Oh, nice shoulder, shoulder shots from Garcia, using every part of her body. Really, those punches are just rabbit punches. They're not doing any damage. She's trying to get Long to do that. Yeah, exactly. She gave her back up because she didn't want to get hit anymore. Now she's got the, the choke hold, and she's looking to cinch it in deep, but she gave up on it. But she still has back, and she still has both hooks sunk in. This is just a matter of time if Long puts up no defense. I think Long's got to call a friend pretty soon because these, <laughs> these punches keep raining down. It's not going to go much longer here. <laughs> Call 911. <laughs> I think you are prophetic here. This oh. one is not going to last. And again, indeed, Cecil Peoples has seen enough. Smart move. This one has ended. Long was not intelligently defending herself. Short night for Long. There's that sharp right turning kick to the midsection. That set the tone for the rest of the fight. Yep. And there's those rabbit punches. Again, not doing tremendous damage. But if a fighter's not defending themselves, there's no sense in letting a fighter get hurt. Exactly. Referee Cecil Peoples has stopped this contest in one minute, 38 seconds in the first round. For your winner, due to strikes, We didn't see much out of her, but we did like her kicks. She obviously has some ground and pound techniques. Rebecca Ryan Long is smiling already, so she's going to have some more action one of these days. Okay, it's time to meet the lightweights. Brittany Pullen versus Tanya Evinger. And on paper, this one looks like a mismatch. Uh, Pullen, only 19 years old, is 5'4". She's 0-2. and two. Uh, Does not have a lot of experience. Conversely, Tanya Evinger, 4-1, and one, has won just about every ground game award you can win. And she has seven years of experience over Brittany. It's either going to be a quick night or a very long one for Brittany Pullen. But I would imagine that Evinger is going to get the best of her either way. The, the technique she has is far and above superior. I give Pullum a lot of respect for coming into this ring, but uh, this could be a clinic. Let's see what happens. Brittany has clearly stepped up. She stepped up about three levels here. So let's see what happens. Okay. Well, good heart. Yeah, so, oh no, that's, you don't want to fall down too soon. All right, here we go. Oh, straight <laughs> right to the chin of Brittany Pullen, and she is unconscious. Oh. I remember throwing down a bag of peat moss in my backyard, and that's what it looked and sounded like. That's 128 oh. pounds of peat moss. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that, it's like chopping down a tree. I mean, you couldn't ask for better technique. Right on the button, she was out before she went down. Oof. Clearly out of her class here. Both hands down, caught it right on the chin, and she took the penalty. I don't think she'll be putting this in a high note. She's fine, though. 
Little welt. Unbelievable. Just a welt. I mean, that's that kind of shot. She's standing up and smiling. I give these girls all the credit in the world. Adds yet another win into her column. Definitely a fighter to keep our eyes on. You know, you, you break up with a girl, she cries for a week, but if you put her in the ring, she gets punched in the face, she gets up smiling. I don't understand it. <laughs> There's the justice. <laughs> All right, we got a featherweight match here. This one definitely looks a little bit closer on paper. Yeah. Melissa Vasquez, 28-year-old, is 5'4", 125 pounds, squaring off against Angela Hayes, the 33-year-old, just a little bit taller, pretty much a wash on paper. Melissa Vasquez trains out of American Submission Fighting Academy. On her feet, she's a Muay Thai specialist. On the ground, she's a submission fighter. Angela Hayes fights out of Congo Do kickboxing. Her most respected fighter, Tito Ortiz. Oh. Vasquez in the black and white trunks. Hayes in the solid black trunks. Hayes got a little something sunk in here. Right away. Oh. Guillotine, it looks pretty deep. Pretty deep. Solid right. Oh, you don't want to get your hips up like that with your head down. That's got to hurt. All kinds of torque is being applied to the neck of the cat killer, Vasquez. Vasquez is in some serious trouble here early on. The case is torquing oh, that oh, neck. This is tough. The cat killer is a pussy cat as she taps out. <laughs> you can't blame her. I mean, you gotta, you, you're fighting for your life down there. There's no air coming through your lungs. She is very upset with herself for getting caught. She stuck that head out. When she went for the shoot, she left her head out. She did not shoot intelligently, and she knows it. Yeah. You can see her shaking her head there. She's very upset. Talk us through it. Oh, nice right nice right leg kick. Uh, she had a sunk in pretty good right there. And I give her a lot of credit. She hung in for a long time with her wind being cut off. Yeah. But finally, it's too much. Ladies and gentlemen, to five and two on her career. And she's very happy, very confident, and very serene with this win. Yeah. Not a lot of posing, not a lot of braggadocio coming out of her, just calm, cool, and collected. Just collect the win and move on. Exactly. Five and two on her career. Melissa the Cat Killer Vasquez drops to two and three. It's time to meet the lightweights. Sophie Baggerdye versus Crystal Harris. Sophie Baggerdye and Crystal Harris. Crystal is 28 years old, 5'2", 130 pounds. Baggerdye, a youngster at 18. Wow. Everything else looks pretty close on paper. 18 years old. I bet she has homework to <laughs> What are you going to do tonight? Well, first I'm going to go into a cage. Yeah. Then I'm going to face another person who's trying to take my head off. Yeah, I've got algebra too, <laughs> and then cage fighting. <laughs> what do you tell your parents? <laughs> Here we go. Well, let's, let's, see, let's see what the age difference means here. Bagger die in pink, Harris in black. Oh, immediately they come out slugging. Oh, man. Some Muay Thai. Oh, oh. Bagger die going for that Muay Thai kick and lost her balance. Ended up on her keister, but she's back up, and now they're trading. I love this. Nicely done. Looks like one of your old bar fights. Woo! Harris is getting in their uppercut, uppercut from Baggerdye. You know, listen to those kicks. I can hear them across the cage. She's got to get her hands up. Her hands are too low here. Baggerdye conversely has her hands all the way up. She's done a great job with the defense. Oh, oh big right! Big oh, the right. left side of, of uh, Harris's face. Harris's hands are too low here, and with Baggerdye's strength, Oh, there's another right jab. This is the kind of action that Fatal Femmes fighting is famous for. Oh, yeah. Two women giving everything they have, standing up and trading. I am I am liking Baggerdye's style a little bit better. Her punches are straighter. Uh, they're, they're more compact. Yeah. And uh, her elbows are in tight and her hands are up high, as you said earlier, AJ. Harris looks like she's in more of a street fight, to be honest with you. But Baggerdye obviously has a game plan. 
And uh, Harris's face is bright pink already. She caught a straight right coming in. Finally, she's had enough. She pulls guard, or tries to pull guard. They're back on their feet, and I don't think Harris likes it. Harris is punching from the side. The yeah. punch is on. Oh. And that's why she's getting caught when she comes in. Well, look at it. She, she comes in completely exposed. Her face looks like chop meat right now. The color of chop meat. Back, right, right. Look at this. They're the color of Bagger Dice trunks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know how she's taking some of these shots. They're right on. Harris, and then she survives round one. Oh, we finally, finally see her on two. We've got a slugfest here. <laughs> wow, and the fans are loving it here. Fatal Femmes fighting. I'm Jay Adams alongside AJ Benza. We're glad you joined us. Gina Carano's with us. She's going to give us some insight. Let's see the beginning of this fight oh. here, AJ. Well, Baggardai immediately sees there's a floor in her defense. And Harris's defense, she gets a lot of right and left hands in the face. Look at that, bang. These are all punishing blows. I'm surprised Harris is still up on her feet. I really am. Harris has a real strong oh. chin. Look at that. She almost went down, but she fought it off. There's our ring girl. Yeah, I think it's only a matter of time before Fatal Femmes fighting has ring boys. I think it's only fair that maybe one of them, maybe some of the UFC guys will come around like Tim Sylvia, walk around a little speedo. That'd be nice. Josh Barnett and a set of tidy whities Why not? Listen, don't adjust the color of your sets. Harris's face is now the color of your frozen food section at your local grocer. <laughs> the color of baggardized trunks, bright pink. Man, oh man. My eyes are bleeding after looking at those trunks. <laughs> Herb Dean gets them underway for round number two. If it's anything like the first round, AJ, it's going to be great. Well, I, I, I think baggardized got to get her down. I think Harris, if you get Harris on her, on her back, off her feet, because the punches Harris is throwing are more of a nuisance to Bagadai's technique here. There's another good right. Yeah, uh, yeah, Harris is getting the worst of the trading. She oh. needs to stop trading. She's tough. She's tough as nails, but that doesn't win the round for you. Yeah, but when you call in card as your, as your chin, it tends to... <laughs> tends to oh, another terrific right hand by Bagadai. Yeah, she's leading with a, a right kick and a right cross. And she's got those sick Muay Thai kicks that are punishing the inside thighs of Harris. Well, look at but she keeps coming. Harris keeps going forward. I gotta give her a lot of credit. And Bagadai is playing it perfectly. She's counterfighting. She's she's counterfighting. She's not waiting to uh, she's not trying to put any offense together herself. She doesn't have to. She's catching oh, Harris boy. coming in. And the bruises on Harris's legs are already evident. Yeah, you oh. can see the welts. Look at the left knee of Harris. It is starting to welt up. If she had an idea to go hiking tomorrow, forget it. <laughs> but look at this girl, she just keeps coming forward. Oh, all the credit in the world to her. She is tough as nails. Why doesn't Baggardai get her down? Well, Baggardai doesn't want to get her down. She's happy standing. She keeps she keeps punishing Harris. Harris is Harris should be taking her off her feet right now. I'm just concerned about the fatigue factor setting in. Uh, you know, two minutes. I'll tell you right now, Harris's corner should be screaming at her, yelling at her to take Baggardai off her feet. Of course. Oh, she's spent. Harris is spent, and rightfully so. Her hands are down by her hips, giving Baggardai a huge target. And they are, those are shin to shin Muay Thai kicks, AJ. That's oh. got to hurt. Oh, nice left hook by uh, Harris getting inside. A little dirty another boxing. round, another round goes by. This is a treat. Win or lose, Harris definitely has the crowd's respect. No question about it. The crowd is showing their appreciation. Half of them are on their feet here. That's that shin oh, to shin shit. that we were talking about. Oh, the look, Superman punch! Look at that. The Superman! <laughs> Bag or die! Wow! Look There's that right. Oh. right. Right crosses, right jabs, left hooks. But there's Harris with a nice right hand. Another ring girl. I like this as the fight progresses. I want to see more ring girls. This is good. <laughs> it's, it's good for everybody. It's good for the sport. Family fun. We'll see what Gina says about that a little later on. Is that guy in the shirt and tired doctor? I don't know. We're going to see a third round. This is a non-title fight. This will be the third and final round. I think even Herb Dean is surprised about this. Pleasantly surprised, I'm sure. Well, you gotta think that Harris's corner has told her to, to take Baggardai off her feet. You just gotta 
at this point. The trading is, has lost both rounds for, for Harris. Uh, at this point, she's either got to submit her or knock her out, I would say, to well, win. Well, like every fighter in the world, she has a puncher's chance, but she hasn't yet hurt Baggerdai. Full mount for Baggerdai. All she has to do is sink her hooks in, and this could be the end for Harris. Harris, I'm seeing no movement from below the waist. She's now given up her back. And Baggerdai trying to sink something in, but oh, she's having trouble. That's got to do it. Harris is looking to control that arm, put her chin down to her chest, but both hooks are now sunk in deeply. This could be just a matter of time, although Harris is putting up a valiant defense. Gosh. Straightening her out now, looking to sink in the hooks, perhaps give her a back crank, hurt that lower back. Yeah. Harris needs to either shrimp out the back or quickly turn and adjust and try to put together at least a half guard. And she's having trouble. That's what she's trying to do now. She's trying to spin, free up that left arm and, and get to a guard position. She's got half guard. She's got half guard. Nicely done. Yep. Look at those welts. Oh my goodness, the right leg of Harris is punished. Oh my God, look at that. Wow. And her face is taking it, a beating on the other side. Oh. Baggerdai has a right hand completely free and she's just punishing the face of Good Harris. Move. Good idea. She's stand him up. Good idea. Oh. Harris trying to pull guard, but uh, didn't have the strength, and this one is in the record books. Valiant effort by Harris, great fight. Absolutely, I mean, I, just the fact that she helped her up at the end, you see that now in a big embrace. She gave her a money's worth. I think there's no doubt who won the fight, but uh, Harris has come away with a lot of fans tonight. Baggerdai absolutely ecstatic at the win. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, she just, she, she's obviously, obviously has more talent, better technique but uh, it's difficult in the ring sometimes when you come up against a girl like harris who just keeps coming at you coming at you coming at you she has a puncher's chance and you just never know yeah harris was very strong she could take a punch and although her boxing technique was not as refined yeah. as bagger died she was still getting some punches in yeah and, and and no matter how good you are that's still gonna hurt and bagger died knew she was in there with a the gamer yeah, and it's going to do a lot for her in this sport as well. It's actually going to help the sport too, because I think people want to see fights that go the distance more often than a fight that lasts 10 or 12 seconds. Oh, they're so much more entertaining when they stay on their feet and they go long distance, and, and both women are willing to trade. Yeah. Uh, clearly, both of these fighters are warriors. Uh, they're ultimate warriors, and they're not afraid to trade, and that's what made this so genuinely entertaining. Exactly. Herb Dean now standing by for the decision. That's a good picture. Yep. Good sportsman. And, uh, you know, that's the thing I love about this sport of mixed martial arts is the camaraderie. Uh, you know, at the end of a fight, they're, th they're tossing them back together and they're laughing about who has the worst damage. And yep. uh, it's not what a lot of people Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of match, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. Our first judge scores it 30 27. Second judge, 29 28. And finally, 30-27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Sophie! Yeah. No surprise there. So the youngster, only 18 years old, in her pro debut, wins. She's 1-0, beating Crystal Harris, who falls to 0-2 on her career. When I was 18, the biggest battle I had was against acne. <laughs> I feel great. Uh, I think I prepared really, really good for this fight. Um, I've been working my butt off, and you know, my grandpa died a week ago, so I said I was going to win this fight for him. I love you, grandpa. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. And the fans help you out here? Oh, definitely. I heard my sister's voice. Way to be loud, Nodge. Awesome fight. I think that's been the fight of the night so far. Congratulations. Thank to you. Girls. Thank you. Yeah! So let's take a look at how Bagadai won against Harris. Well, it's pretty simple. She came straight across with right and left hands. That's a beautiful overhand right by Bagadai. 
Harris made the mistake of constantly coming in with her hands down, leaving with a chin, and there's another result. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to have heart. It's definitely an important aspect of being a fighter, but you cannot win on heart alone. Tonight's historic fight is brought to you by Invincible Inc. and Jim LLC. For more information on Fatal Femmes fighting, to purchase tickets for upcoming fights, or to purchase merchandise, please log on to FatalFemsFighting.com for more information. All right, now with, through our first five non-title fights on the night, the next three fights all have belts on the line. What do you think so far, AJ? I think the District of Little Tokyo is loving this, I gotta <laughs> tell you. Uh, certainly, you have, to, you have to give the girls a lot of credit, a lot of respect. They've earned respect, they've been bringing it from the bell, and anybody who says otherwise is crazy. These girls can bring it. No question about that. Now, earlier tonight, an announcement was made that whoever wins the middleweight belt between Yoko Takahashi and Jen Case will be facing none other than Aaron Towhill. Wow. Here's what the charismatic Aaron Towhill had to say about this potential fight in June. I am ecstatic. I've been dying to fight for a title. I haven't gotten a chance. Whoever wins tonight better keep that belt nice and clean and shiny. Come on. Hey, where I come from, those are fighting words. She's beautiful, she's smart, and she's a great fighter. I know Fatal Femmes Fighting is happy to have her on one of their cards, and I know Aaron Tullhill is going to be happy to, to, to fight in one of their first best events. I'm really excited to see that fight, but first, to have the honor of that fight, these two middleweights have to get by each other. Jennifer Case and Yoko Takahashi. This is going to be an incredible match. What can we look forward to in this fight? We know Jennifer Case's game. She's great on the ground. She can throw heavy hands as well. I don't know much about Yoko Takahashi, but I do know the Japanese are synonymous with pride. And I don't think you're going to see a tap out here. I could be wrong, but in my mind, I think she'll wait till the final bell and maybe even death before she taps if she has to. <laughs> I hate to root for somebody named Yoko since Yoko broke up the Beatles. <laughs> so I'm going to give the Gen Case and a squeaker. All right, I can't take the suspense anymore. The lights are dimming. That can mean only one thing. It's time to watch an awesome fight. Here we go. Got a great middleweight fight in store for us. Yoko Takahashi versus Jennifer Case. These are two quality fighters. Yoko Takahashi coming from an outstanding school in Japan. Takahashi Yoko desu. My name is Takahashi Yoko. Kanami wa... So it's been a while since I've fought in a cage, but it's fun. I'm looking forward to fighting there again. I want to show American fans out there my own fighting. I want to show American fans the real me. I won't know what the fight is like until I try, but I want to show my opponent my striking skills. Never, ever, ever underestimate a Japanese fighter. I don't care what their record is. I don't care how humble they are before the fight. You can never be sure what they're going to do in a fight. They're so unpredictable, and they start off so dynamically. I love these fights. Well, here you go. Here's a great instance right here. Look at, look at Takahashi. The stage is rising. This could be a Madonna concert right now. <laughs> Instead, you've got one of the most vicious middleweights around. I don't know how long the plane ride is from Japan. But that's got to weigh in, too. No question about it. Now, I've never seen uh, a Japanese fighter uh, show any exhibition of jet lag, or, I mean, they just... I mean, look at this. Does this look like a jet lag fighter? Here? I know. This is amazing. This is... I, I can't do this a flight to, to, to Vegas. <laughs> I mean, I, you're going you're to see a lot of discipline from Takahashi. Takahashi fights with a lot of will. I hate to say this without sounding a little bit uh, biased, but I think with a Japanese fighter here, you've got to do an awful lot to actually see one of them tap out. I think they all rather go get pummeled at the after, but I don't think many of them would like to tap that camera. Yeah, they remind me of the Brazilians. There's there's a lot of pride involved in not tapping out. Uh, you'll see a Brazilian or a Japanese fighter go through an incredible amount of pain. You'll hardly ever see them tap out. They usually will get injured before they'll tap, right? There you see her getting ready. Yoko Takahashi fighting at the 155 pound class out of Tokyo, Japan. She's 33 years old. Uh, she's trained out of the Tomegume school. Her style uh, on the feet, Kempo and Aikido, and of course Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and submission grappling on the ground. She is telling a lot of people she will win tonight. With a purple speed racing bicycle out of the boot.
my fighting background, originally I was Hawaiian Kempo. I've been doing that for about six years now. I got my black belt uh, last year, and, uh, and I started professionally fighting in 2004, so I've been doing MMA for about two years now. My opponent should fear me uh, because, number one, I'm, I'm very tough, I'm very skilled, and I'm very smart. And in an MMA, a smart fighter is a very, very tough, very scary fighter. I think what's going to help uh, the sport grow as far as women in MMA is getting skilled fighters in. Getting rid of all the little cheerleaders and all the, you know, the pretty girls that think they can fight and they really can't. And getting in the skilled fighters and showing people the talent that we have. I think that's what's going to help the sport really blossom and grow. Wonderful addition to the Fatal Peps fighting family is Jen Case. You see, she can talk it up, but she also backs up her talk. She's three in one, and she's talking about being a smart fighter. Bachelor's of Science, magna cum laude, with department honors, PE major of the year. So, you know, the whole thing of being a smart fighter, this is someone who thinks ahead four or five steps ahead of her opponent. Unbelievably confident. Hard to believe this young woman is only 24 years old. So much maturity, so much confidence coming out of her. Also, absolutely no showmanship around. She's coming in the ring like normal. No fanfare, no dry ice, no rising stage. This is business. I think that's what she wants to do. Done. Coming in with the gi, showing that I am a professional athlete. I am to be taken seriously. Uh, we are to be taken seriously as women. And you will see, I will back up everything I say in the cage. Yep. And that's one of the things I love about this sport. Uh, everybody gets a shot. Women get fully respected. Anyone who steps into the cage, <laughs> <Speaking of stepping. laughs> now that's how you step into a cage. <laughs> Yoko Takahashi, look at that. With the sumo. The sumo going on here. Bruce Buffer's calling this one, and he's loving it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the last three main events of the evening. Five two-minute rounds for the Fatal Femmes Middleweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. She is a Hawaiian Kempo and Jiu-Jitsu fighter who holds a professional record of 10 wins with seven losses. She stands five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Tokyo, Japan, Yoko A Kepo and Aikido fighter who holds a professional record of three wins with one loss and one draw. Standing five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Topeka, Kansas, Jen Ellen. A young Ellen. <laughs> Very good, Jay. <laughs> See some people's third man in. All right, guys, this is, this is for a belt, this is for a title. I want a good, clean fight. Keep your hands up, protect yourself. Obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Any questions? Good luck. Oh, I can feel the energy, AJ. This is going to be a good one. Well, can this be said, considered a home match since we're in Little Tokyo? Does Takahashi be a little more comfortable right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who, who's on home turf here? Right, right. <laughs> There's a tale of the tape. Yoko, uh, a great deal older at seven years older. Everything else is a wash. Nine, that, year, nine years older. Nine years older. There's my math. That's all right. Nine years older. The rest is the rest is kind of even. How will that age uh, difference play out? If you're Japanese, I don't think much because I think the the, the Japanese people as a whole train differently. They, 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 there's so much more. I don't want to say disciplined at it, but I think that age is just a number to Japanese more than American women. Oh, a big straight oh, right, wow. just missing. Two rights in a row, just missing the face of Jen Case. Yoko had malintent on both of those punches. You can tell the upper body strength on Case is something to be reckoned with, though. She's got Takahashi in a nice tight neck hold here. Yeah, and it looks like it's quite a bit sunk in there. Now, her leverage is not what it could be from the position she's in, right. so uh, Yoko should be okay, and indeed she does pull out. But she is by no means out of danger. Case is awesome from her back. Yep. Unbelievable submissions. Going for a triangle now. Oh, nice. And looking to loosen up. Now, again, those punches aren't going to do much. They're just meant to loosen up Yoko so she can sink in that triangle. 
has turned into a nice high tight guard. You can tell, you can tell that Case is very disciplined. Look yeah. at the look at the rubber guard. Look at how high up as oh, she goes for the triangle. Yeah, triangle here. And she is in some serious trouble, Miss Yoko. If you were as upset as I was when Yoko broke up the Beatles, this is our chance for revenge right here. <laughs> Yoko Takahashi trying to get out of this triangle, oh, which is awfully <laughs> sunk in right now. That is tight. Huh? Boy, Case looks great from the ground, doesn't she? Yeah. You can see the thought process. Look how calm she is. Oh, hey, hey, this is bad. You don't want those hips up too high. Going for an arm bar. here. Takahashi, very cagey, very smart here. Good defense. She's maintaining wrist control. She's not panicking. And she's out of trouble. Wow. End of round one. A lot of times what you see, AJ, is a fighter start to panic when they get put into the triangle, the yeah. armbar. They start lifting up their opponent, right. but that just sinks it in deeper. Exactly. You can see the calmness. You can see how well-disciplined and well-trained Yoko is. Get a, you get a good look at Yoko right there, and there's Jennifer Case. We knew this was going to be a good one. It's shaping up to be a, an intellectual battle. Well, look at, I mean, Case, oh, that's a first nice left hand by Takahashi. And she, she landed that one there, but the next one she just misses and hits the canvas. That could have been a really fatal blow to Case if she took it. Green girl number two. They all look alike to me now. <laughs> I don't even see him anymore. I've been <laughs> yeah, married now right. for three years. I don't even see him anymore. Wait till your fourth year. You'll see him. <laughs> Sorry, honey. That was AJ speaking, yeah. honey. <laughs> Just to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> All right, round two getting underway here. I expect Case to stay nice and calm like she did in the first round. Now, you know, Takahashi's got a strong kick. I haven't seen it yet, but now might be a good time. Oh, oh, nice right by Takahashi. Takahashi with that unconventional stance. Oh, catches, oh, catches Case twice coming in. That's a beautiful left jab as she's retreating. Yeah. If she had stepped into those punches, that could have been yep. real trouble for Case. Yep. Case with the half guard looking to perhaps create side trick. Oh, she looks like she might be going for a sweep. Good job by Takahashi of rendering Case's right hand uh, immobile, but it is free now. Yeah, she's cagey down there, Takahashi. Both of these fighters so well disciplined. They've both been in this position millions of times. Oh, yeah. You're going to see them both working to improve their position. Neither, neither fighter will be panicking. Case now, blood coming out of her nose. So one of those retreating blows from Takahashi did some damage. Now, here comes some good elbows from Case. Trying to loosen up Takahashi for the armbar or perhaps the triangle. Look at the flexibility of oh, Case. My word. There's nothing I love better than when a fighter can move from below the hips and create this kind of offense from the bottom. Oh, my, that's good, right, Jeff? Those are just they sting and disrupt your thought process so much. Takahashi is in some real trouble here. Oh, she's got an arm. Yeah, yeah, and and she's got a and Case has a good grip on uh -oh. that arm. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Tapping out wow. is Takahashi. Wow. Jennifer Case is tapped out. Yoko Takahashi here to win the middleweight belt. And this is setting up a rivalry now. Yeah, yeah. Toe Hill versus Case. Oh, I can't wait to see that one. You can see the goodwill here, good sportsmanship being displayed by Takahashi. And AJ, Takahashi is hurt. I think that there was some uh, blood that was pulled out. I think a couple of those chokes yeah. actually squeezed blood out of the oh, nose of God. Takahashi because she was never really hit. Yeah. And she looks like she has some real problems right now. She looks like she's had some head issues. Yeah. She's bleeding from the nose. That boat, that choke was so tight. And as you were saying earlier, AJ, the Japanese will not tap out. She was loose. She's probably popped a million blood vessels in resisting that tap out. I'm sure it's the last thing she wanted to do. But when you when there's no more oxygen getting to your brain, uh, your thought process is not what it should be. But it was the right move. Tap out or blackout. Right, exactly. Come in. Ladies and gentlemen, we see some people on the top of this contest at 1 minute 39 seconds of round number two. Now the winner by tap out due to an arm bar. And now the fatal pens, middleweight champion, Jennifer Case! In case the winner, as you see the man behind her, 
is Noah and her very proud papa. That's Mr. Jen Case. I don't know his first name, but that's her dad. You could see that fatherly pride, AJ, just, just exploded out of him. Well, here's a good explosion here. You know, Takahashi comes out swinging hard, a good overhand right. Those glancing blows that Takahashi hit, my, oh, that's a good stiff left. That might have started the blood flowing in, in Casey's right. case nose. She stepped into that left. That was, yeah. She ate about four punches, but it didn't matter because she was retreating in there. When she locks the arm, oh, that tap was not what I anticipated at all in this fight. Yeah, it was, it was torqued right oh. on the elbow. Case had put Takahashi's elbow right on her thigh, and she bent the other way. Oh, boy. No one can, no yeah. one can withstand that. That's why the armbar is so effective. Yeah. There she is, the new middleweight champion of the world, Jennifer Case. Nice fight. Nice. She stayed calm. She stayed strong. Took a few belts to the face. Came out on top. Gina! Hey, I appreciate your respect to having this search all over the world trying to find someone to take me on. Right on. How do you feel? Your performance, are you, you look awful comfortable on the back. I feel real good. You know, I think uh, Yoko's a good fighter. You know, she put up a good, uh, good little defense against me, but not good enough. <laughs> right on. Okay, a little cockiness here. So, do you have anything to say to Aaron Cohill that just got me here? See you in May. Thank you, Gina Carano. You heard it from Jennifer Case. Oh, this sets up an unbelievable match, a rematch. Actually, a rematch. Uh, Tohill managed to defeat her by strikes in the second round the last time they fought. And you know Jennifer Case wants redemption. Oh, absolutely. She's got a lot of pride, a lot of class about her. And like you said, you just can't tell by looking at someone who's going to win. You look at Tall Hill, she's taller, bigger, stronger. But like the old saying goes, it's not always the size of the dog in the fight. It's more often the size of the fight in the dog. Well put as we take a very close look at Jennifer Case setting up the rematch with Aaron Tohill. Wow, what a way to start off our main events. Now, I'm a little bit surprised, frankly, AJ, to see a Japanese fighter tap out like that. You and me both. I said it before. I doubted she'd tap out. I think the Japanese have a lot more proud than that. But you know what? Jen Case controlled the game from the ground. It was her fight from start to finish, so what are you going to do? Jen Case has a very big fight coming up against Erin Tohill. Now, she mentioned that it was going to be in May. That fight has been pushed back to June 30th, so very important to make note of that. It certainly is, but I think Jen Case would fight Toe in the parking lot with the lights out right now. She wants to avenge that loss she suffered in September 06 at the hands of Toe. That was a brutal one. For sure. This was a loss that Jen Case was stopped in the second round. Now, it's bad enough in Jen Case's mind to be stopped in a fight, but the way it was stopped on strikes, particularly embarrassing for someone like Jen Case who wants to be the champion of the world. It's her only loss, and to be stopped on strikes, you know she's going to be gunning for Aaron Towhill in this June 30th fight. All right, let's talk about the fight at hand. This is a very interesting matchup between Cassandra Blasso and Roxanne Mataferi. First of all, you look at these fighters' records, you want to go, what is Casey Blasso doing in the ring? She's 0-1. Doesn't mean a damn thing. She's an Abu Dhabi champion. So this fight is a champion versus champion matchup. Now, Roxanne Mataferi, on the other hand, needs absolutely no introduction. You love this girl. <laughs> the doe-eyed assassin. I definitely have a crush on All her. Right. She is widely considered by everybody in the, in the MMA community to be one of the, if not the best, 135 pounders in the world. Now, she fights out of Adams, Massachusetts by way of Japan. And I have a theory about girls out of Massachusetts I want to get Hold to. that thought. Oh, okay. Hold on. Right. We have a fight to get underway right, right now. <laughs> Let's check it out. Look at this fight coming up, AJ. Are you psyched? Oh, I love this fight. My name is Cassandra Blood. Special skill that I, that I would have uh, basically my ground game and my setups. I'm really good at setting up my submissions. Feels great, the pressure's on, but I'm going for it, man. I'm, I'm going for that title vault shot, and I'm, I'm gonna give, give that girl my A game. She's gonna get it, she's gonna get it. Cassandra Rivers Blasso. Five foot six, 135 pounds, 23 years old, out of Madison, Wisconsin. On the ground, it's Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. On her feet, it's Muay Thai and kickboxing. 
And this is definitely shaping up to be one of the best fights of the night. We've already had some great ones, but these are two quality fighters. Cassandra knows uh, the scouting report on Roxanne Modafferi, who has fought just about every who's who in the women's MMA. And Cassandra is so excited for this shot. And Cassandra's no slouch in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well. Seven years of training judo, five years in the MMA. And this is no newcomer here, folks. Oh yeah, you see, she has a great ground game. Fights really well off her bat. Real solid submissions. Definitely going to be, uh, there's going to be some ground game here, folks. We're going to see some superior uh, ground chess, if you will. I have a theory, though, if I may. Roxanne Monteferri is a girl from Adams, Massachusetts. I don't know about you, but I dated a couple of girls from Massachusetts, and they are bad. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe the Red Sox always lose it. I don't know what it is. Oh, that hurts. But I that tell hurts. you something, I'm a Yankee fan. But I'll tell you something, <laughs> they know how to fight. My name is Roxanne Modafferi. What I hope to accomplish is showing the world um, not only my skills, but that women can do mixed martial arts just as well as the men. And I want to be the best fighter, the best mixed martial arts fighter in my weight division. It's a rush to be in the cage. I'm on a different sort of consciousness level. Um, just all there is is the fight, and it's, it's fun. I can't wait to get in there. I'm determined to show the fans a good fight, a good mixed martial arts fight. I'm going back to Japan with that belt in my suitcase. This is undoubtedly one of my favorite female fighters in the world, AJ. Uh, I was uh, honored enough to call a couple of fights uh, with her on the card in Utah. They were the classics where she beat Jennifer Howe, um, which I would love to get Jennifer Howe over in the Fatal Fence. Yeah. Uh, you, if you ever want to see uh, some incredible fights, get those fights, no matter what it takes, because you're going to see what Roxanne Modafferi is made of. This girl will stand and trade with you all day long. Uh, she doesn't look like, I think this is why I love her so much. Does she look like some killer? She looks, I, I, I wanted to nickname her the Doe-Eyed Assassin, but she, she wouldn't let me. She wouldn't let me do it, but she she's kind of looks like the sweetest thing in the world, shy. Oh, those pigtails, those pigtails will fool you. <laughs> no, yeah. the big brown eyes, yeah. but this, don't, don't let the eyes or the pigtails fool you, folks. This woman is a killer. Now, here's a girl who's been well-versed in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, submission grappling, taekwondo, kempo karate, kickboxing, Muay Thai, boxing, and like that kind of thing. Just uh, all of those in spades and extensive. For, for her age, as a young 25-year-old, to have the knowledge base she has, uh, and talk about smart, I mean, this is someone who, who is an Anglo from the United States who speaks fluent Japanese. Right? She's done all the translating for us uh, and done a great job at it. She's just an outstanding person. So there she is, Roxanne Montefiore, wanting the belt. The Doe-Eyed Assassin. All right, I like that. What's going on? She's gonna kill me when she finds out. <laughs> I can't help it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is five two-minute rounds for the Fatal Femmes Lightweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter who holds a professional record of one win with one loss. Standing five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Madison, Wisconsin, please welcome the World Grappling Champion, Cassandra Blasso! And now, introducing her opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Considered worldwide to be the best pound for pound, 135 pound fighter in the world. She is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of seven wins with three losses. Standing five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds, fighting out of Adams, Massachusetts, Roxanne Moda Perry! Follow my directions at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Let's make this a nice team fight. Touch gloves, come on, ready to do it. Good up, girls. Yeah. 
There's the tail of the tape, the lightweight division. This is a title fight. This will be, if it goes the distance, five two-minute rounds as opposed to three. 23-year-old Roxanne facing the 25-year-old Cassandra Blasso. Everything else is a wash. This ought to be good. Herb Dean is your third man in. Ready? Round one, underway. Mataferi in the solid black, Blasso in the navy blue and black. Oh, a big right there! Stunned Mataferi coming in! <laughs> it's gonna take more than that, though. Oh yeah, Mataferi can take a punch. Pulling guard is Blasso. Going up to the high, tight, closed guard, looking to control the wrist, going for an early submission. I don't think it's gonna happen this early. Monteferi likes a triangle choke. Well, if she if she likes the triangle choke, she'll sh she probably will have a good defense against it. Yeah. So she'll be watching for Blasso, going for it right now, trying to set it up, and we'll watch the defense of Monteferi. One of the things I love about MMA, AJ, is Blasso is the aggressor. She's the offensive yeah. person right now. She yeah. is on offense, and she's on her back. Good flexibility being demonstrated by Blasso, looking to get the guard up high. She's going to try to set up that triangle. Looking to control Mataferi's wrists. Mataferi trying to post up, get some distance so she can rain punches down. But Blasso showing very strong guard here. Yeah. Really keeping Mataferi close to the chest. Ooh. One right getting through. Modafferi having trouble, however, posting up. Now she's looking to stand up and get some distance. Uh, she might look to break free and stand up, although Blasso's not letting her. Triangle is now could be cinched right here. It looks like Modafferi's trying to use her elbow as a leverage point. Oh, yeah, saved by she the get, bell. She get lucky there. Boy, 30 more seconds and Mataferi could have been in some trouble. And everything we said went out the window. Mataferi yeah. knows she was in some trouble there. She's, you can see she's thinking about it right now, like, what happened? So how, how did that you know, happen? How do you figure all those years of training and exercise and technique, it comes down to one slip, one move, and you can lose a fight. Nicely put. One mistake can ruin your whole night. You train for five, six months for a fight. And you, and you give someone your arm. And if you're Blasso, you're looking for one of those mistakes like she found right here and capitalizing on it. Had it not been for that bell, had it not been for the two minute rounds, Blasso's arm could be raising the victory right now. Blasso doing a great job of showing her opportunistic style. Very calm, looking for the opening, looking for Mataferi to make a mistake and jumping on it. Yeah. I got a three-year-old daughter named Rossi. This is tough for me. I, I, I almost want to cheer on with the name, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to be impartial here. <laughs> Mother Fairy will get inside you. She'll, 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 she'll put those big eyes on you. Oh, yeah, the doe-eyed. Yeah. The doe-eyed assassin. The doe-eyed assassin. Oh. oh, those sound, they hurt. They sound as bad as they hurt. Nice oh. toe-to-toe -to -toe oh, action yeah. here. Oh, stiff right. Blasso just ate a, a stiff right and then it followed up with a straight left. Pulling guard, she wants nothing to do with oh, those yeah. punches anymore. She's like a spider. I think, uh, but I think Motiferi's uh, corner more or less told her to go out there and be a little more aggressive, and uh, she did. Yeah, that's a good point. They were definitely on her about that. Uh, she looks stunned at the end of the first well, round. Well, she's here in that position again. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're happy with this at all. I don't think she can stop it, AJ. Uh, that when when Blasso pulls guard, she just throws all her weight into it and pulls her right down. There's not much she can do. They're both 5'6", but for some reason, Blasso looks taller than, taller than that. She looks, she looks longer than Modafferi. Yeah. Maybe she's so limber and flexible here, but she looks like a taller fighter. And she, the big problem for Modafferi right now is Blasso can pull her into the ground position at will. And, uh, and Modafferi has not come up with an answer for it. I think Modafferi should at least think about throwing some, some, some hands into that face. I mean, yeah, there you go. Give her a couple of rights now and then. It'll at least make Blasso think twice right. about uh, pulling her into that guard. Right, here we go. The 
problem is posting up. Blasso is so strong, she's keeping her in tight, and Modafferi can't get up. She can't even get an elbow in there. Exactly. Just too close. She's yeah. too tight. Yeah, she's playing it right. Blasso is really playing this fight right. Great defensive skills off her back. Oh, oh, Although ooh. that one got through. Yeah. So this is this poses an interesting question, AJ. When you have a, a fight like this, Montefiore is taking it to Blasso, but Blasso is creating more damage and more opportunities. How do you score something like that? I'd have to give it to Blasso ahead right now. I think she's she's done. She, well, here we are at the end of round two. If it's not even, it's Blasso by by a nose. Clearly a close fight because Montefiore is taking it to Blasso, but Blasso is doing more damage. The trade of punches here was great. I think I think uh, what happened is Montefiore came out from a corner's instructions and started throwing some more punches. But like you said, once she's down, once once Blasso brings her down in guard, she's not able to do much. Two well-conditioned athletes in great shape. You th me and you? Looking really good. I thought you meant you, me and, you and I. I was going to say, what, what are you talking about? That's clearly not me. <laughs> <laughs> clearly not me. <laughs> You see Blasso getting her instructions, Mataferi getting coached by some of the best in the world. It's the Luis Claudio combat team out of Adams, Massachusetts. Blasso coached by the Luis Claudio combat team out of Rio de Janeiro. Oh, wow. It's like uh, two ATT teams, yeah. or two Lion's Den teams, just different cities. They can have just as much bad blood they want to prove which school is the best or which did the best with the master's instructions. Third round starts off the same as round two. Both fighters trading punches, blow to blow. Both fighters standing up. I don't think, I don't think Mona Ferry is going to find herself on the ground too soon here. I think she's going to try to keep this fight up as long as she can. Especially with the way, uh, with the way Blasso is keeping her chin up. She, chin up, and you know something, Blasso has to have extended a lot of energy on the ground the last two rounds. It takes a lot of strength to keep somebody in so close like that. Oh, her face is wide open for these shots. Yeah, she is, that's horrible form. She's gonna get knocked out if she keeps her chin up like that. I'm sure her coach, her team is yelling at her right now, get your chin down or take Montefiore to the ground. Yeah. She's been so successful off her back, I think that's her best strategy. But I think she's losing a lot of energy that way. But uh, we're going to find that again. It looks like... Nope. Modafferi trying to do a hip toss of Blasso, but Blasso showing great base, refusing to go down. Why don't more fighters at this point slam down the other fighter's foot? Just slam down that inset. The old Marco Huas, yeah, the foot I stomp. Mean, come on, let's get some foot stomps in there. It used to be used quite a bit back in the day, back in the old school day, and it uh, is definitely effective. Marco Huas, there it is. Yeah. Look at that. Hey, what are you Boy, <laughs> how prophetic. I'm ahead of my time. <laughs> oh, looks like Montefiore might be trying to put some kind of guillotine choke. Oh! 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 oh. 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 Big body slam! Blasso slamming Montefiore to the ground, and she sucked wind after that hit. A big gush of air went out of her lungs. And Montefiore might be hurt. She might have had her bell rung. She's beat red after that, at that landing. Yeah, that was a really hard body slam. Oh, oh boy. I want to see that again, because I think Montefiore lost some wind on that one. Outstanding move by Blasso, because Montefiore was in the middle of sinking in a sick choke on her. Great move. Now you see, here we go with the replay. See, there's just no defense on Blasso's part. Those, but then she comes right back and starts throwing haymakers herself. Oh, that nice right got right. through. Nice, two rights. Good fight. Here it is, oh, here it is. Oh, oh and look at Montefiore's mouth. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. Wow. And that definitely took a little bit of the wind out of Montefiore's sails. She was in the middle of an offensive move. She was sinking in a choke, and she got hurt. Is this thing going to go five rounds or what? Wow. Great fight so far. Yeah. You see Montefiore screaming, trying to psych herself up, using some of that stand-up technique. Here comes the Boston in her. Here comes the mass. The mass is coming out. <laughs> Working hard to win the fight. <laughs> Oh, boy. 
Nice takedown, nice shoot by Blasso. Was it just a, a ill-timed punch by, by Modafferi? He's a big haymaker that went nowhere. Set up the takedown. Blasso going for side control. Oh, oh Modafferi putting on. together an arm. Look at that flexibility. It's just a matter of how slippery she is from conspiring this whole four rounds here. Yeah, she lost it there. She's got it again. How about some knees? There you go. Right now, Blasso getting coached to watch her base, stay low, stay nice and low. All the pressure is on Mataferi right now. Blasso can actually relax to a certain degree. Blasso's playing this great. Nice move by nice. Mataferi, but she may have given up position because uh, she is now in a choke. I think fatigue might play a factor here. I don't know if either fight at this point can sustain these holes. They've, they've been battling it out for four rounds now. They've, fatigue's got to be a big factor. Not much time left in the round as Mataferi looking to put some offense together. This is perhaps one of her best positions of the fight. Yeah. She's finally in a dominant position where she could do something. She had troubles, if you remember in the first couple of rounds, she had troubles from Blasso's guard. She couldn't post up, right? and she couldn't get any kind of distance. Blasso has a fabulous guard, really doing a great job of minimizing any kind of damage that Modafferi can inflict. Look, a perfect use of her forearms, great use of her wrists, her elbows are coming out. I, I tell you, she's ahead, she's ahead of my card. Looks like she got warned on the elbow. Uh, and, and, oh, and she told the, she told the ref it's allowed. Yeah, it's allowed. And she threw another one. <laughs> End of the round. We are going five. Woo! It's a good fight. Yep. Hey, look, at, look at the hop in Motorferry's step though. She's still got a hop in her. I don't I don't see that. I know Blasso to me right now is ahead. If at the fight ends now, I think Blasso has it, but. Well, AJ, I've watched Mata Ferry fight five rounders all day long. Oh, nice right elbow. Oh, that. good. Right, you're right about that. Boy, she really freed it up, didn't she? And there yeah. goes a left. A little ambidextrous here. <laughs> Switch hitter with the elbows. <laughs> there you see Blasso getting coached. Looks like she may have banged her head or she's getting some cold water applied to it and a little bit of a rub down there. There's Mata Ferry's corner. As we said earlier, both Luis Claudio combat teams. Lasso's out of Rio de Janeiro's, Mataferi's out of Massachusetts. This is for bragging rights. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if I'm Mataferi, you gotta come out striking fast and hard at the top of this round and get something going. Stay off the floor. Don't take it down there again, because Blasso is shown. Oh, she tries a nice flying knee, but nothing. Got double underhooks going, looking to throw Blasso, but I don't think that's going to happen. Blasso has is is, uh, exhibited great base, and uh, she's... Oh, look at this rubber guard, though. <laughs> Monteferi, <laughs> she looks like a, like an infant. You know how infants yeah. can take their legs and just put them behind their head? Chew on their teeth, yeah. I chew on their toes, sorry. <laughs> that's right. You have a three-year-old. You're used to seeing that. Full closed guard, Mataferi trying to walk off the cage. She does not like having her head against that That's cage. That's a bad spot to be. If uh, Blasso can can post up and rain those punches down, there's no place for Mataferi's head to go. So she has to walk off that cage. Right now, she's in definite danger. Blasso should has to rain a few more punches down in the next minute. She's got this fight, in my opinion. Interesting. I think. I think it's tight. Tough one to score. Yeah. Tough one to score. Oh, wait a minute. Does she have an arm in there? She's trying. She's working it. Mother Ferry's trying to work. This could be tough. Uh oh. Just having trouble getting oh. that right leg under the neck of Blasso so she can straighten her out and hold on to the arm. Well, the flexibility exhibited by Mother Ferry and the defense exhibited by Blasso. This is a treat to watch. Folks, if you want to understand the ground game, you watch a fight like this and you watch the chess game that's going on. These are yeah. two highly trained athletes. And they're transitioning from offense to defense so seamlessly. Ten seconds Ten to go seconds. in the fight. 
Montefiore desperately trying to get that arm. Oh, she wants the arm. So Can close. she get it? Five seconds. Can she stretch her out? The fight is over. This oh. one is going to the judges, folks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I would not want to be a judge in this fight. Uh, I wouldn't want to be Montefiore or Blasi. You hate to put it in the judges' hands. You have to have such a great five rounds of fighting. There you see a great shot of Blasso with the American flag behind her giving a wink to uh, someone in the cage. She's feeling good. She feels good about her fight tonight and what she did. She obviously gave it everything she had. Let's go one more round. Come on. <laughs> so, Can't do that? Let's solve this thing. Come on. Well, like I was saying earlier, I don't know what kind of gas tank uh, Blasso has, but I've watched Mataferi in championship fights. You know, she pulls five five-minute yeah. rounds. So yeah. she's she's definitely got a gas tank on her. Although she's looking like yeah. she's feeling it right now. Puffing and puffing. Yep. She probably didn't didn't um, mark herself as much. She probably, given the fact that it was two-minute rounds, she let herself go a little bit more, and yeah. that's maybe why she's huffing and puffing. Herb Dean taking out one of the officials. A little bit of bad blood between those two. <laughs> Could be some stuff going on later on. I don't think either fighter knows who won. No, this one they is... They have no idea. Tough one, tough one to call. Great judges, though, here. I'm sure that they'll do a good job. As we get a close look up, look at Roxanne Modafferi out of Adams, Massachusetts. Brazilian jiu-jitsu on the ground. She lives in Japan. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as we were saying earlier, speaks fluent Japanese, one of the most difficult languages in the world to learn, especially as an Anglo. It's a completely different set of rules. It's it's not under the Arabic system. No, I only order from column A. I never look at column B. Can't deal with it. Can't deal with it. <laughs> that was AJ saying that. Again, Jay Adams with the clips. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the thing is no one knows no. so thanks you set me up perfectly there oh the friends and family here are going to be watching this well, let's see if my Massachusetts theory holds up I never thought Madison Wisconsin had some fight in it Madison Wisconsin home of the Badgers showing, Jesus come showing, the cheese heads that's right showing a lot of fight there she is right there Cassandra Rivers Blasso out of Madison, Wisconsin. Kind of with those Roger Daltrey eyes. Yeah, right. I'm waiting, I'm getting, waiting for her to sing Tommy in a minute here. <laughs> and here's Bruce with the call. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand at the five round <laughs> First score is 49-46, Matafari. Next judge scores it 48-47, Blasso. And finally, 48-47 for the winner by split decision. And now, the Penn Fatal Lightweight Champion, Russell! The Joe I Assess. Look at that smile. Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm is now the new title holder. I tell you something, I feel good for her. I don't know what judge could have a three points ahead. I really don't. This fight was as close as they come. I mean, you can see here, Lasso. Lasso's got heavy hands. Heavy hands. This one could have gone either way. There's absolutely no question about it. And, and you know what great argument could be made for when a fight is this close? 49-46, I don't understand. I don't see that. I don't, I don't see three, three points apart from these two. No, it was very, very close. Here's that big body slam that you got to give a lot of, you got to award points for. Now, I don't know if, if, if the way Montefiore opened her mouth, if that oh. was a training technique to let the wind out so you don't get hurt, it, it almost looked like she did it on purpose, or it just could have been knocked out. I'm curious because you saw the, the, the blow she just gave uh, Montefiore, and you saw her elbows when she was down. You saw her throw heavy hands. I don't know how one judge had a three points ahead. Yeah, that was an amazing fight. Did you expect uh, Lazo to come out with that kind of strength and grinding? No, actually, I didn't expect it at all. I thought it was going to be much higher than I anticipated. I've got to ask you, what's the difference between training in Japan and America? Um, my usual education time in Japan has many, many uh, pro fighters and dozens, and they are taking under their wing, helping out, and 
you know, what comes in my little internet journal. Come on, can we this or that? So you have a big base in Japan fans there? Fans mm -hmm. and supporters and friends. What do you have to say to the fans for writing the moves and the men? Thank you for coming, thank you for supporting us. Uh, thank you to Eddie for this. Um, he's really helped start something to reach uh, as far as his cage fighting. Uh, thank you to uh, my coach here for coming here. Well, thank you for coming here. So there she is, and she is loving it. And I, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. I love watching her soaking it all in. The people clearly love her. Yeah. She's so humble and so modest. And, and boy, anyone who's that good and humble at the same time, your heart goes out to her. There's no doubt, and a lot of credit's gonna go to Blasso, because I don't think people had her, or gave her much of a, of a chance before this fight, and she certainly showed herself to be quite a fighter. So Roxanne Modafferi, the Dawn Assassin. <laughs> you like that? And the badass from Mass. But we do have a new world champion in Roxanne Modafferi, and it could not have happened to a nicer person. It's time for the main event, and I can feel the electricity in the building. Okay. Let's look at a recap of all of the fights that have happened so far. First, we saw Jessica Penny submit Brandy Nerney by rear naked choke. Then it was the big girls at 165. Pearl Garcia defeats Rebecca Ryan Long by strikes. In our first lightweight fight of the night, it only took 16 seconds for Tanya Evinger to dispose of Brittany Pullum. And Brittany was clearly outclassed in this match. It was a vicious knockout. After that, Angela Haynes inflicted her will on the cat killer, Melissa Vasquez, taking only 44 seconds to apply a guillotine. Then we had our fight of the night. I hope you didn't miss that one. As Sophie Bagardai and Crystal Harris stood toe to toe for three rounds in a nonstop action-filled fight. Bagardai took home the unanimous decision. Then in our first title fight of the evening, Jen Case gets an armbar submission on Yoko Takahashi. And just a few minutes ago, Roxanne Mataferi continued her terrific career and added another belt to her wall of accolades with a split decision victory over the tough and very game Cassandra Rivers Blasso. Which brings us finally to here, the main event, and you can feel the electricity in the building unknown fighter Masako Yoshida and if she's anything like the earlier Japanese fighter you know <laughs> she's going to be good squaring off against superstar Lisa Ward out of Seattle Washington going to be a good fight certainly is and this is not the last of historic nights you're going to see in women's MMA I think you get the sense that fatal femmes fighting is going to be around for a long time a great job by Eddie Millis of Invincible Fighter and the rest of the guys from Jim LLC just a good job all around it's been an absolute honor and privilege to bring the fight to you our viewers I'm Jay Adams alongside AJ Benza if you want more information on fatal femmes fighting if you want to find out about our fighters or purchase merchandise go ahead and visit us at fatalfemsfighting.com you'll be glad you did all right it's what you've been waiting for the Main event, Masako Yoshida versus Lisa Ward. All right, there's only one left to go, and it's a big one, a flyweight championship. My name is Yoshida Masako. I've been doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for about three years. Being in a cage or a ring is like being in the zoo. My goal in mixed martial arts is to see how far I can go as a fighter. I'm excited and nervous at the same time to be fighting for a title. So there she is, Masako Yoshida, kind of like being in a zoo. Look at this. Wow. The Japanese definitely have a plan for making an entrance. And this is outstanding. I, you know what? I got to tell you, I appreciate this. Absolutely. This, to me, adds to the sport. It, it, look at her. She's... She's intense, she's, she's got this whole business, this dramatic business, and you know when she gets in that cage, oh, look at her. Oh, I love it. You're very good I tell you what, from fun time, you know she's in Kill Bill 3. <laughs> there she goes, Masako Yoshida, 13, 6, and 5. Uh, 167 centimeters, I'll let you convert that. 110 pounds, and something else. 48 kilos, I don't know, it's not it's a lot of heroin, that's all I know. <laughs> uh, no, here's what I like about the, the Yoshida. Her, on, her, on her sheet, she lists her best technique as cooking. Not Muay Thai, not Jiu Jitsu, cooking. <laughs> so, unless there's a walk in the ring, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe she's 
like going back to the 30s, like, hey, we're really cooking. I'm really going to cook in there. I don't know. There's a language barrier, so maybe I'm way off on this. But uh, again, they can't stand up for their entrances. I love what they bring to the fight. And uh, Lisa Ward's all business, though. So, um, oh, I mean, there's no question Yoshida is definitely bit off a lot. My name is Lisa Ward. I've been wrestling since about the seventh grade, and I went to college for it, and then I came back and started learning some jiu-jitsu and such, and it just evolved into wanting to take a fight. Fans should come see me because I'm a very entertaining fight. Um, I think I bring a lot to the game, and I have lots of good wrestling and good throws, and it's always exciting. I usually have a pretty damn but MMA right now is skyrocketing. So I'm really excited to see it in a few years, see where it's gonna take it. Yeah, just pretty much beat everybody. I wanna be number one. Who doesn't? When Elon Lewinger called me and told me he had Lisa Ward on the card, I got really excited because uh, there's a fighter I've been following a lot in the Southeast, uh, Jessica Aguilar, who is just outstanding. It's one of Jessica's few losses on her record. Uh, and Jessica told me when I was coming out there, she says, keep your eyes on this girl. She is going to be a champion. She's one of the best in the world, if not the best. But Lisa Ward is definitely someone to keep our eyes on. Out of Seattle, Washington, trains with the United Training Center. She's a freestyle fighter, and she is good. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, she didn't want to breathe in the dry ice on the way into the ring. She kept her... <laughs> You have the talent in front of her mouth, but uh, yeah, like I said earlier, you know, the, a lot of the American girls are not all from Patty Tree. They're just getting business done and getting in and out of the ring as quickly as they can. Uh, so we got two very different styles of, of fighting here, and it can be very interesting. The last fight with five. Let's see where this takes us. Lisa Ward says, I'm a Scorpio and I'm Irish, which equals feisty. I like adventure and action, and if it scares me, all the better. I'm a firm believer in following your dreams and having fun doing it. Life is too short to hate what you're doing. Definitely. Uh, she, this girl is, is, is very strong. She has unbelievable slams. Really, really good wrestler. And she says... Jay, let everyone know I have a kick-ass boyfriend in Eddie Ellis. Yeah. <laughs> Who's my support, and I love the hell out of him. I don't want to know what a lover's spat between those two turns into. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our last bout of the evening. Five two-minute rounds for the Flyweight Metal Fans Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A jiu-jitsu fighter who holds a professional record of 13 wins with six losses and five draws. She stands five feet tall, weighing in at 110 pounds. Fighting out of Tokyo, Japan, the Jiu-Jitsu 48 kilo class champion, Masako Yoshida. Freestyle fighter holding a professional record of seven wins with two losses. Standing five feet three inches tall, weighing in at 110 pounds. Fighting out of Seattle, Washington, she is the NFC women's lightweight champion, Lisa Ward. And when the action begins, our referee in charge is Cecil Peoples. All right, ladies, I want you to obey my commands at all times. I want you to keep your hands up and protect yourself. Now, this is the main event, title fight. All right, let's get it on out there. Well, we don't know what Yoshida's going to bring to the fight, but if it's anything like any of the other Japanese fighters tonight, it's going to be dramatic. She could come out real strong and do something flashy right in the beginning of the fight, like the other Japanese fighters. But either way, you know she's going to give Lisa Ward a great fight. Cecil Peoples, third man in, and whoa! <laughs> oh, oh, she paid the price. Boy, nice idea, but it got crept up on her. <laughs> Lisa Ward was having none of that. No, no. Take that flashy stuff, and here it is. Yeah. Right now, she's got a very torqued neck. She, right now, she's 
Kind of doing one of those Mark Coleman neck cranks. <laughs> oh, nice elbow from Ward. That neck crank used to work all the time, but now they've created a defense for it, and it's uh, not too practical anymore. I wonder what, what Yoshida's corner told her to go out there with that flying kick like that. It just seems so... Uh, oh, oh, those, those forearms are destroying Yoshida's face. I heard, I heard that I forearm know. from across the cage. You oh, heard the thump. God. Yoshida doing a very good technique, though. She's keeping everything in tight, so she's not giving, a, she's not giving her anything oh. to grab. Ward was looking for an elbow or a mistake, and Yoshida very well trained. She's balling up very well. Ward's tossing her around as if she's 50 pounds heavier, but in reality, at the same weight, it's just the strength of Ward. That's a good point. They're the exact same weight, and yet Ward looks so much stronger. Right. That's all core strength. Yeah, you can see it. She's just, just very well muscled. Ooh, the elbow. Oh, here comes a little trouble. Right now, she has Yoshida's back, and Ward is looking to sink a choke in. She's got uh, that body triangle going, too, which yep. is going to really keep Yoshida exactly where she needs her. And somehow, I don't think fatigue's going to play a factor in Ward's game. Uh, it's a great hold. Boy, you can tell Ward is trained. Now she goes into the full oh, mode. comes some pounding. She's got, and she's got her back, and she has both hooks sunk in. But look at Yoshida spinning out of it. She's and saved by the bell. Survives the first round. Yeah, that two-minute bell has uh, cost a couple of fighters tonight some advantage. Oh, yeah. That is a California State Athletic Commission rule. It is not a fatal FEMS rule. I think I'm at liberty to let you know that we would like to oh, change I, that. Oh, and look at that knee. No, I tell you, that knee did connect. I didn't, I didn't realize it did. It did get, it got Ward's chin. So good for Yoshida. That's actually the only offense she's shown so far because Ward has controlled the fight. It's been just nothing but defense for Yoshida since the, since the first kick. Exactly what you're looking at now is what that whole first round consisted of, which was Ward tossing Yoshida around, as you said, AJ, like she was 20 pounds heavier than her. Yeah. Yoshida, you could tell Yoshida, say, okay, what do I do against this girl? Oh, she was like, when's the next plane out of here? <laughs> Where's LAX? This girl is strong. What do I do? <laughs> Yeah, look at the shoulders on Lisa Ward. Yeah, yeah. And she just, she's, boy, every pound of that 110 pounds is muscle. Oh! Shin to shin. Oh, not shin fun. to shin. Not fun. Did you ever bang your toe on the bedpost at night <laughs> yeah. and start crying? I cry for hours. These girls are going shin to shin and like it's no big deal. <laughs> oh, it looks like she just caught the tip of Yoshida's face with that right turning kick. You know, here's an observation. Yoshida actually has a manicure and a pedicure. I don't think I'd come into the ring like that. That's got to piss off your opponent. Oh! And raising goes. up at the end is Ward to put a little extra exclamation point on that body slam. Oh, man. Boy, what technique. It wasn't good enough just a body slammer. She, <laughs> she had to do a Matt Hughes rising up, get a little extra distance, yeah. and slam her down. Again, at the same weight. I can't believe it. Just overpowering yeah. Yoshida. Good. Now push up against the cage and posture up. Yoshida's good technique is the only reason she's not bleeding and unconscious right now. It shows you how effective good jujitsu is when she's going against a girl who's twice as strong as her. She's surviving, and that's 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 the goal of mixed martial yeah. arts. Is hey, if I'm out on the street, can I survive someone who can take my head off? Right. And this is a perfect display of how to stay alive. I don't. You know, she's not putting any offense together yeah. simply because Ward's not giving it to her. Right. But she's saying, "Hey, look, this is how you stay alive against a killer." Yeah. Lisa Ward in the blue and black. Masako Yoshida in the black and red trim. Masako a little tentative on those kicks. Fast feet. Ward's got some fast feet. Hey, she doesn't want to get inside. She's got to, have to yeah. get inside if she wants to make those kicks count. But she's been punished every time she gets inside. I can't blame her. Oh. End of round two in this flyweight championship match. Jay Adams alongside AJ Benza, Gina Carano out getting our ringside banter, if you will. 
or cage side banter. Oh, there's those shin kicks. Oh, yeah. And but neither fighter, there's that Matt oh. Hughes slam really rising up. She had to step on her tippy toes at the end. And here's that kick that just clipped yeah. the tip of Yoshida's face. Yeah. If Yoshida was standing two inches closer to her, the fight could be over. Yeah. But Lisa Ward having her way to this point with Masako Yoshida. You see her again saying, what do I do? Right. I can translate that Japanese. <laughs> she is strong. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Round three. It's a flyweight championship match. Fatal Femmes fighting. Visit us online. If you've missed any of our fights so far, that's where you can see them. Merchandise and background on all of the Fatal Femmes fighters. Just too strong. Yeah, too strong. And so she shot in too quick. Uh, you know, she did, she's kind of giving half-hearted kicks. And that last time, Ward just jumped in. I just don't think she has the offensive weapons. No, no. It's, there's, the heart is there, the will is there, but she can't damage Ward, and I think Ward knows it. Yeah. Ward now with side control, looking to choke out Yoshida. Good, good. Wow. Oh, that right just missed. Oh, big right elbow. Yoshida is in definite trouble. She needs to keep Ward from posting up at the very least. Well, you saw Eddie telling Lisa to throw elbows a lot. She's listening. There's another one. Yoshida looking to put some offense together. She's trying to get her leg up high. Get up. She needs a two elbows. She's in trouble. She needs to get that guard up much higher, and she needs to tighten things up. This is bad news right here for Yoshida. Another slam, yeah. tossing her to the ground like so many bags of what? Peat moss? Peat moss, uh, 110 pound bag. Dog for cats, dog food, whatever you want to call it. They come in a big bag. <laughs> and they sound loud when they fight. Looks like Ward might be trying to get a... Uh, Perhaps a Kimura from the back. Uh -huh. It looks like she's going for the wrist. Either that or you know, she's just trying to control Ward's right wrist. Got, she has her back now. But Yoshida is very good at defending against that. She's quick spin moves, yeah, quick. keeps her arms in, doesn't give up that arm. She's not making any dumb mistakes, she's just being overpowered. A little bit of an opportunity there for Yoshida. She at least was on top. It's the first time she was on top and yep. she didn't do anything with it. Ward actually got off a couple of elbows on her back. So at the very least, Yoshida finishes the round on top. It's definitely not a, enough to win on the judges' scorecard nor anybody else's card, but... See, hey. she shot in there on that weak kick from Yoshida. Ward was able to take her down. I think Lisa's got to be frustrated at this point. There's that nice kind of a combo. Oh. Yeah, the problem with the, all of the kicks and the flashy kicks, especially when they're non-committed kicks, when there's no a commitment in the kick, is it leaves Yoshida vulnerable towards takedown. I'm sorry, the ring girl distracted me. What were you saying? <laughs> it's not as important. Okay. It's not important at all compared to the ring girl. So. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Not yet. <laughs> You're exactly right, though. Yeah, you, you look at this fight. Look, Lisa Ward's face is, is more pink. It's more flushed. It looks like she's... Faring worse, but in fact she's not. She's ahead on everybody's card, undoubtedly. But uh, I've got to give some credit. Yoshida's quick. She's agile, and she's got she's got a fighter's instinct. She doesn't want to lose this fight, but she's well, got to be more offensive. But what she needs to do now is develop a, a sprawl. She needs to develop some takedown defense. Uh -huh. Forget the fancy kicks, none of that stuff. Let Ward come to you and sprawl a little bit. Make her work for those takedowns. And then try to create some offense off the takedown. It looks like cooking is her best technique after all. Oh, oh, oh. oh a nice oh, left by Ward. Big left. Oh, oh. And a big takedown. Oh, oh, oh. She dragged her down the fence. Yoshida gathering her wits, trying to keep Ward in tight. It's survival mode at this point. That shot, that shot, that was a nice left. That shot, Yoshida. Yeah, Yoshida's in trouble. She was rocked. She was definitely uh, stung a little bit by that. Uh, you can see her against the cage trying to gather her wits. At this point, it is survival. Hey. 
But, you know, interesting what, what you said earlier, AJ, this could be frustrating for Lisa because Lisa knows she's stronger. Yeah, I know. Uh, but she's having trouble putting her away. And she does not want a decision. She wants a big, exciting win. Right. You right. know, she knows that she has friends in the audience. Final fight of the night. It's big for the league, and I think she wants to go out real, real strong here. Oh, there's some good shots in the face. And... Yoshida's making her look bad. As good as Ward is, right. it's not a clean, you know, decisive win. It's exactly. it's uh, it's messy. Yeah. Although those oh, are pretty clean elbows. elbows. Five, five elbows. That'll yeah. She, those are pretty clean elbows, and she's gonna let Yoshida stand up. Yoshida looks okay. No cuts. No abrasions. No. Ward is flushed. Yeah. Ward, isn't that interesting? Ward horrible. looks like she's been punished more than Yoshida. No, those, those, she has no, she obviously doesn't want to get any close with those kicks at all. Yeah, Ward gets a, a reward off every kick, yep. and Yoshida gets nothing. She gets air. She gets an extra round. Yes, she survives. But the story of this fight, clearly Lisa Ward has a nice, strong, short left to knock Yoshida down, and then Ward just pounced on Andrego down the fence. Oh. Punishing elbows. Okay, Yoshida walked out with a parasol before the fight. She could have used it there for some defense. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining elbows out. If she had one of the Penguins parasols, you know, with the smoke and everything else, she would have been all right. Something. She is. <laughs> Generally, when you have ice pack, ice pack supply from the front and back of your head, you're in a fight when you're not winning. Generally speaking. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That is your biomarker. That's that's the marker. Lisa Ward getting her instructions from United Training Center. Crowd wants a knockout. Corner wants a knockout. I'm sure Lisa Ward wants a knockout as well. Yoshida wants to survive. Yeah. Oh, big right. I tell you, Yoshida's got a good chin. Yeah. It looks like she's taking some offense. Yeah, see? Oh, boy. Here comes the pound. Oh! And that has been the frustration for Yoshida. Yoshida came out very aggressively, was throwing kicks, throwing punches, but she has no takedown defense against yeah. this award. Now she's going to eat some elbows, I'm sure, over the next couple of seconds. There's two. Oh. Yeah. Oh! Lisa might have been a little bit stunned on that kick. She's down a little bit. She's fine, but that was a great offensive move. Yoshida putting a little something together oh, here. That kick, if that kick landed, it could have been, that could have been damaging. But Ward swallowed it up. Yoshida looking for a guillotine. She has very bad leverage, but she does have full guard. Look at this. So she could put some torque on that chin and on the neck. It's a matter of how much energy she has left. And Ward's face is turning beet red. Yeah. Does she have the strength to do it? Can Ward, oh, She's Ward out. pops out. Wow. That was Yoshida's perhaps best chance yeah. of the night. That was it. That's gotta be disappointing for Yoshida. She gave that everything she had. She's running out of time. Going for an arm bar. And Ward slips out of the arm bar and slams oh. Yoshida's head to the ground. Yoshida has an ankle. She might go for some sort of an ankle lock. She gave it up. Oh, Yoshida keeps coming. 10 seconds left in the fight. Yoshida got to do it now or never. Oh, nice left by Ward. Yoshida keeps coming. Nice right. Oh. That's a good fight. They're trading at the end. Two good warriors. Wow. All the credit in the world for Yoshida for hanging in there against a, a superior fighter in Lisa Ward. She made it a good fight. She's a gamer. Absolutely. I don't think anybody here thought this would go five, especially Lisa Ward. Yeah, Yoshida was an absolute question mark. Uh, coming in here with the 13, 6, and 5 record, you have no idea who those fights were with. You don't know if the 13 wins were easy. Right. You don't know if the six losses were hard yet. Yeah. We just, they're just question marks. You right. don't know what's going what's gonna to be brought. Uh, but we did know how good Lisa Ward was. Yeah. And you can see it in the face of Yoshida, clearly disappointed. Uh, she knows. She knows she lost on paper. Uh, boy, good sportsman. I love this sport. 
I really do. Yeah. It's nice to see the two fighters yeah. embrace like that afterward. Such respect. Lisa Ward is a little upset with herself. Yeah. She, you know, like we were saying earlier, she wanted the clear win. She wanted, you hate having to go to the judges card, even if you, if you know you're ahead on points. Uh, you want the big, decisive, you'd love the knockout, or at the very least, a submission sure. in front of the hometown fans. I think Lisa Ward has, has been one of our adopted fighters. The yeah. fans here in Los Angeles absolutely love her. Uh, she is out of Seattle, but, uh, you know, she's a West Coaster. Oh, yeah. And for, for Yoshida, it's how many hour plane flight is this? I don't even, I don't, I don't know. What is it? A, 16 hour flight back to Japan? I can be way off. No, you know, you're right on target. Uh, oh, I, I did an Australian trip once and it was right around 16 hours and, and Australia's not too far off of Japan. I think it's about a 14 hour trip. Oh. We have three scores, 50, 45, 48, 47, and 50, 45 for the winner by unanimous decision. And now the Bayou Pens flyweight champion, Lisa! Lisa knew she had that. She doesn't even, she doesn't even look that excited about it. I think it's because she really wanted the big win. I think she thought she'd walk out of here with a knockout early on. You gotta give to Yoshida credit. Absolutely. Yoshida has nothing to hang her head about at all. There's that first, perhaps her best offense, the first move of the night, that flying knee to Lisa Ward's chin, and she really wasn't able to muster much more than that the rest of the fight. That was that kick that grazed the front of Yoshida's face, and this was the ground and pound clinic. I'm surprised there's no blood. That's a lot of elbows she ate. You know, that's a good point. I mean, she was elbowed for five uh, rounds straight. Oh, yeah. For her not to be bleeding is, uh, is amazing. And there's a new champion. Hands up held by Cecil Peoples and Eddie Mills, our promoter. Let's throw it up to Gina Carano inside the cage. You with Eddie. No, I don't. Lisa. Lisa. Eddie. Hold on. Hold on. Where did you learn those slams? She slams like Matt Hughes. it's been the world of MMA has been treated to a terrific night of women warriors now we saw two belts stay right here in the United States and one belt is in a suitcase on its way to Japan but to be enjoyed by an American and you have a sweet thing for the badass from mass don't you you really do I'm more of a Gina Carano man myself but I ain't gonna mess with either one of them I'll tell you the truth <laughs> I'm Jay Adams for AJ Benza and Gina Carano from the Japan American Theater in Los Angeles California good night